Hi creatives, it is Monday, Mixed Media Monday, and I'm Rita Bearcat. I have something really fun to show you guys. I'm super excited because actually somebody else brought it to my attention, and at first I was thinking, what? You want me to do what? But um, they sent it to me, and I'm trying it out. I tried it out today, and I'm pl I've been playing with it, and so I wanna show you this really cool thing. So, hi Margie, hi guys. Um, yeah, I already saw some hearts go up, but I'm seeing, oh, okay, there it goes, there it goes. I can actually see the scrolling up now. So, as always, if you have questions during the episode, please leave me a comment below, and I will answer it live if I can, if you're on live and I catch it live. But if not, no big deal. You can leave it down there below, and I will answer it on the replay. Hi, Danielle. And also, you guys can always ask me a question later, like if you watch the episode and then you think about it in a couple of days, just go ahead and put it in the comments and I will try to answer you as we go. Because sometimes, you know, we get those questions, yeah. So anyways, I'm gonna pan down. I have a lot on my desk. I've been really, really playing today, which has been really nice because I haven't been able to play in a while. So uh, yeah, let's get to it. All right, oh, and please, Okay, please, please, please share if you guys like this video or if you have friends that you think might like it as well. And I always forget to say that, so I wanted to say that up front. Okay, all right, panning down. Let's see. All right, so on my desk, I've got some very fun things. Hi, Jenny. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. As you guys are popping on. Um, I've got some very fun things here and some things that are really out of my wheelhouse. But they may be, maybe they're in your wheelhouse. Maybe you've seen this stuff before. I don't know. I really hadn't seen this before, so I thought it was super cool. And I thought I would try it and let you guys see how it works and how you could use it with mixed media. Hi, Brene. Hi, guys. Now, if you guys come on there um, and you don't... And, I, and you don't see anything, sometimes I don't see you. So make sure you guys are commenting. So what I have here, I'm moving this glitterific over. I've got some, some paint here. All right, so I've got this really cool tool and I don't know if you guys have seen this before. So this right here, hi Michelle. I did with this felting tool. Okay, look at this. So this is this is a needle felting mat right here. This is what I used. And I'm gonna show you how it works. And I did look at this really cool mermaid tail. And I did it for one of our for one of our dolls from the Magical Theater book, which is on the website right now, and that's what we're kind of looking at this week. So I wanted to make her a mermaid tail, and I love I love felt, but what I didn't what um this felt is from Kunin, and I love felt because of the bright, bright colors that you get. What I don't love is um, I don't sew, so I end up using glue, and then I end up not liking it because I don't like to see the white paste, or, you know what I mean, I don't like to see little clumps and stuff. But, but I have on here, I've got some, because I've got this really cool thing, and I don't know if you guys have seen these before, but this is from Clover. And so it has like little needles here. I'll lift this back and those are sharp, so just be careful. But what's really cool is they're in here. They have that plastic case there enclosed. And then you just stick the two things, like let's say we wanna stick this little flower. Here, let's put a little piece of fabric here. So I'm putting a piece of felt and I've got a little felt flower, right? So I can just go right on top and it fuses the two together really quickly. So I'm just punching this. It's super, super duper easy to use. Okay. So, and you can see on the back, it has a little bit of fuzz. And if you were going to maybe glue that down, you could you could probably cut that off. I kind of like it because it has a little poof to it, just a little bit. It's not that much that it's noticeable, but it has just a little poof. So what's really cool is you can use this, not only with felt like this, you can use it 
with this. So this is wool roving. And I know some of you guys probably already have done this and you guys are old pros. <laughs> but I'm going to take this. I'm just going to put it into a little a little shape. And that's how I did I did this like seaweed kind of thing going through here and little leaves with this. I was also, this was my first attempt. And then I'm like, oh, I could do a little seaweed or a little tree or something by stretching it out and using it that way. Yeah, this is my first time doing it too. So, which just goes to show it's super easy. So you don't need a whole lot. I'm just going to bunch this up. And you can make your flowers. That's how I made these little flowers right here. Is you just take it. And if you want it, whoops, there's a little piece of something there. If you want it more, you can, you know, put those hairs in and just kind of push it into place. So you're making that shape. Now, let's say you wanted to, I don't know, make a heart or something, right? They have smaller ones that have like one tip. They have one that has three or four tips. I don't remember, but I'm just going to push this back a little bit here. And you can see I'm pushing it in into the shape I want it to go. Now... These are nice and strong, but I will say, you know, be careful not to twist them the wrong way. So, because they can break, you know, it is, it is a little needle. It is so fun. It's so easy. I mean, I could see sitting down for an afternoon and just doing this because it's so easy. So now I can go in and push. I'm pushing all my stray hairs. And there you have a little heart. A little bit lopsided, but you get the idea. So really quickly, how easy was that? I was able to make a little heart. I was able to attach my little flower. You know, they're not going anywhere. It's nicely attached. You can do this with, you know, maybe a wool hat or something or a felt hat. But what I did for here, for this mermaid, is I just cut a sheet, a little sheet. I cut out of this other color, right, the mermaid tail, because I wanted it to be long enough to fit one of our paper dolls. Yeah, unless your finger good. Yeah, don't put your finger down there. <laughs> so I cut the, the tail about this size, right, because I wanted it to be... I wanted her to be able to fit behind it on a paper. And then I took yarn. And this is really cool too because, because it's yarn and it's fibrous. That's how I did these this word love too. Let me show you. So let's go right here and I'll show you. And that's what when the one comes really, really in handy. So we're going to, I'm just going to anchor it kind of into place, you know. And we can take this and let's curl it up a little bit. Let's pull it back. And you guys, seriously, I did these all freehand. So but if you can't, if you're not familiar, if you're not... If you're not, if you don't feel good, I am like tongue tied tonight. I think I need to drink a water. <laughs> I don't have any water up here. Um, that's what happens. You don't have an assistant close by when they're in Chicago. <laughs> Hi, Beverly. Okay, so I'm going to take this around and look at this. Well, I wasn't trying to make a circle. I was just kind of trying to show you. It more looks more like a, oh, we can make a little fish. Okay, let's make a little fish. Okay, so I got it and attaching it there. Then we're gonna go this way. 
we're gonna make a little fishy and so I'm just kind of holding it in place of course not where those needles are gonna go you want to keep your fingers away from the needles and kind of go this way a little bit for our little fin for our fish Okay, and then I'm going to bring this back here to meet the fish. Close up our fin. Don't get your finger. And there you go. There's our fish. And so, you know, I have a little, I have very sharp scissors here used for my fabrics and then if you have a little like you can barely see it but you can tuck that right in by just going right on top of that area so now we've got a little cute fish how awesome is that so this is like a yarn so a yarn would work really good with this with the felt the other thing that works really good with it too is ribbon so I want to show you that but I will say it's not all kinds of ribbon because I tried doing this and it really had nothing to grab onto it because it's more of a string. So, but when I use this, because this is the backings on this sheer mesh kind of ribbon, this worked really well and it stayed down. You can see it's down here. It looks like it was sewn on and I did no sewing, which is awesome. So you can see the fibers. So I think as long as it's something that has um, a fiber through it. Oh, the ribbons. So like that ribbon's like this one. So this will work really well. Um, I, I think it just has to have something. So you would have to try different things. I tried this one. It's like a little velvet one, which I thought would look so cute, but it didn't work. <laughs> But, you know, that's how we learn, right? We try different things. But I know this one works because I used it over here for her top. This is going to be the top. The only problem is, is I have to remake it because, as you can see, the bottom is a lot bigger than the top. So she's not exactly, she's, she's going to have, like, humongous hips unless I can tuck this in a little bit. I mean, I could cut it out and tuck it in, tuck it under a little bit, I guess. I don't know, but I kind of, after I did it, I mean, I was just planning to play with it, but after I did it, I was like, oh my gosh, how cool would it be to do the whole, like a whole entire scene for the mermaid underwater, you know, having like seaweed, using the, the felt for this, for seaweed, you, you know, doing little fish and her mermaid tail. Now this right here. You can see, of course, I had to add some glitter in there. And because I didn't have any glitter felt on me right now, I went ahead and used some Glitterific on there. But one more thing I want to show you. If, if you are feeling like, oh my gosh, I can't draw. I don't do any of that stuff. How am I going to, you know, how am I going to make this thing, right? How am I going to make this project? Well, no worries. No worries. Yeah, I think it would be really fun. I think I want to make a really big one. All right, so let me move some of this out of the way so I can show you what my thought process is here. So I have this new seahorse stamp that I'm so excited to use. And let's do, we're gonna make, I only have, I only have a few colors of this wool pelt, so, or this wool roving. So I've got these greens. So I thought, well, okay, I'll do it with the two greens and then I'll have this teal background. So if, if any of it shows, it'll show that teal background as well. So we're going to use um, a light blue just so that I'll be able to see it. And we're going to use an art foamy stamp. So normally I would use a, um, one of those spongy stamps, uh, spongy foam, foam brushes. That's what I'm talking about. Jeez Louise, you guys, you know, when you don't have water, <laughs> you kind of just get out there. Okay. So here is what's cool. 
you can paint your art foamies or whatever other large stamp that you may have and stamp on your felt, which is what we're gonna do. And then we're gonna use the roving on top to make it look really cool. If this is a brand new, not in the shop yet. I still have yet to put it up. But you know how it is when you have something brand new, you're like dying to use it. Okay, so we're gonna stamp our felt. Actually, I probably should make it yeah, a little bit farther over. All right. Okay. So we've got our image. I may have missed some of these areas here, which is why a foam stamp or your stamp buddy would have been really good here, but that's all right. You get the gist of it. Hopefully we'll line it up pretty close. Doesn't have to be perfect. We are gonna cover some of those areas. All right. All right, so I'm gonna set those aside. So we've got our little shape here and I'm gonna pull out some of this. And you can see you don't need a whole lot. I mean this, you you need very, very little. So we're, I'm just gonna pull out some bunches here. And let's pull some out of this color. just so that I don't have to do it in between, hopefully. Hopefully I'm pulling out enough. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, so there's a couple of ways that you can do this. You can, you know, like I did over here, I kind of took it and I rolled it up first because I wanted it to go from fat to skinny and I kind of wanted to make my shape. And I think maybe that's what we'll do here. But you don't have to, you know, you can just play with it and see how you like it. And I think, let's put this under. Oops, I really lost the piece there. Let's go from, let's go from the top. So let's go from here. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking I'm just gonna put it on here just so that we can get our basic shape. And so the first thing you wanna do is just get it down and then you're going to move it into the shape that you want it. I mean, you wanna get it in the general vicinity, of course. Okay, now we wanna come back and we're gonna to try to make some, some marks here. here and you can always add to this too so don't feel like oh I have to get it just right or you have to measure it or anything nah you just work with it and you can add some more if you need to and let's just say for fun, I know you guys would have it perfect every single time. Um, let's just say for fun that we're like, oh, you know what, I hate this color and I don't want it on there. That's not what I thought it was gonna look like. You know, you can easily pull this up. So you just have to be careful pulling it up. Will acrylic paint work on any stamps, rubber, or acrylic? Uh, yes and no. Um, yes, it will work. It's not as clean as doing ink. 
so you could do it but it's just not as clean as doing ink and then you want to get it off right away because you don't want to ruin your stamps so does it work yeah does it work as good as ink no you're not going to get as sharp lines but because art foamies are so big that they work really well for you know fun big projects and they work really well with paint or with ink okay so I can go in here with this little one and just try to you know move over some of those areas but it doesn't have to be perfect because we could go right over this with this darker color I'm just wondering if it's not going to be enough of a differentiate dif Oh my goodness, you guys. If I if it's going to be enough of a difference. <laughs> okay. I just want to kind of put this here. Ooh, this this might be it. Good. Let's let's twist it. I just had a really good idea for a unicorn. <laughs> By doing this twisting. So let's twist it. Let's kind of hold it in the place in the middle. So if you go over a line, you can just go over that piece you already went on. Right? So we're just going to make this here. And let's move this down here. And you can see I'm able to really go all the way down and just really line this up. This would make great horse hair too, I think. You know what I mean for a project? Or unicorn hair. I just need to get some other colors. Now, starting tomorrow on the blog, there is going to be, we're having a blog hop for these products, and the team has come up with some really cool ideas, so make sure you stop by the blog tomorrow, because if you want more ideas for this, we're going to have a ton. You can see already how it's shaping up. Oops. See that? Nice tail. Let me just keep on going there. And if you want to make it thicker, you can go right over an area that you already went on. So I'm using the same color to go right on top. And it has this plastic thing on here, so you you are not gonna punch it any deeper than that brush. They purposely did it that way so that you wouldn't ruin your needles. Not that I couldn't find a way around that because I did. <laughs> I broke two um, because I was twisting it. You know, I was kind of I don't know why I was doing this because I was trying to make it turn, but. Don't do that because it doesn't work. It just breaks the needles. So there's another one that has four needles, and that one was, I really liked that one too. Um, for smaller areas, but when you want to have more than one needle like this one, but I broke it. Uh, the tool is called, so the brush underneath is called the needle felting mat and it looks like in a package like this and then the tools let me grab the package here okay so they come in these packages like this so and you find them where you know where they have like all the yarn that kind of stuff 
in the, the your stores. So I just thought this was really fun. And, and I can just think back of there are so many times when, you know, I, I may have wanted to decorate something, but I didn't want to paint it, you know, or I just wanted to add a little maybe fabric flower to something. Now you can make your own fabric flowers, right? Because I showed you how to make those, like that heart. You could put a bunch of hearts together and make a flower. But you can see how that's shaping up. So we would do the whole thing. Oh, but I want to show you too really quickly. So I showed you how to make that flower, or that heart, and it's all all the fabric's a little bit stacky. So um, I know it's here somewhere. There's the top, and I don't know what happened to our fabric. Oh, here it is. Okay. So just like we did this little heart. You can do a bunch of little hearts and you don't even need to use fabric underneath. Okay, so let's say, let's say that I, I wanna do, I'm gonna do a little heart here. So let's just take this. I know there are so many cool hobbies. I know I was asking, I went to Michael's today because I wanted to see if they had any other colors and they didn't have any of this. And then I checked um, Joann's and we have a really small Joann's and they carry it but they didn't have it in the store, um, which was a bummer. But okay, so I'm just kind of shaping it on there already with nothing underneath. You don't need something underneath you guys, okay? So this is just that wool, the roving wool. And I know, uh, Danielle, you asked me about Glorific. Um, I have not looked at it for it there, but I did see it in Michael's today. And it was like on an end cap. And it was really cool because it was like all the colors. So it was fun to see all the colors together on a on our rack. Okay, so you can keep working this, keep making it tighter, you know. Keep playing with it until you like it. It's probably easier to see with a darker color. I probably should have picked a darker color. But all the colors they sent me were light. I don't, I don't think that they knew that I'm the jewel tone girl. Okay. So you can see we have this nice little shape, right? So you can do a bunch of these little hearts. And let's say you have you know, three, you have like say three or four for maybe the bottom layer and you can put them all together. Here, let's just make a quick, let's, let's use this. Let's make a quick heart with this one. And let's do a little bit of this. So it's not going to be the best colors together, but Hey, you know what? That's all right. Because we're experimenting, and that's what we do, right? Always when you get a new product, that's the first thing I do, is I try different things. I try it how the manufacturer says, and then I'll try some other things to see if I can find something new and cool that it could do that maybe they didn't list on their site. You know, or sometimes I'll just, I'll just open it and just start playing with it. Like if I kind of, if I think I know how it works, but then I will try to go back and see how did they use it and what, what was their thought behind it, what was the thought process. Where's my other? See, this is one of the other one would have really does come in handy. Okay, but already we're gonna kind of push these two together. Skinny 
one. Oops, there's my timer. Gosh, wow, you eat really quick, Margie. <laughs> So I have two hearts that I have put together and I'm showing that you don't need the felt behind it. You can just make it with the wool. Like if you wanted to make your shape. It's just for me, I felt like it was easier unless I was doing a round circle. I liked, I liked that the sturdiness that the felt gave it, but this works too. Okay, so now we've got two hearts, right? And so, or, so we're pretending that there are two cool colors that go together. So if we do two more on this side, well, there's a couple things that I'm seeing here. One, I see a butterfly. It's a little lopsided, but you get the idea, butterfly. Or if you add two more flowers here, right, and maybe even add another layer of hearts, two more hearts, and fuse them together in the center, then you can have a really nice flower. And what I did like about using the pelt was making a little round center for it. So I'm just bunching this up to like a little ball and then we're going to anchor it in here now of course you're going to have to play with it so that you can learn you know what sizes work you know i just started playing with this i've only played with it a few times so but we're pretending that we have all of our hearts laid out like flowers and then we can have a fun like little pom-pom in the center for our center flower and it would be really pretty, right? Or a really pretty, pretty butterfly. So lots of fun things that you can do with it. Um, I am gonna work on this. I'm gonna, I am gonna do this again, but um, I'm gonna put it more in the center because I was just playing with it when I started and I wasn't really sure what I was gonna do. Um, so I was trying to see different things that I could do. I also want to finish this because I think this would be really cool too to do this little seahorse out of this felt and You can use any stamps of course and you can add little flowers Oh, and how I did this one was putting instead of putting them on flat Let's see if I have another one here well, I'll show you with these two flowers. So instead of putting it on flat, the two little flowers, I folded them in half and punched it. And so then when you let it loose, it pops up. Now that flower is a different flower than this one, but just so you get the idea, this is another felt flower. And where's my, oh, I was gonna say, where's my tool? Hopefully this works. This flower is a little bit thicker. Okay. I'm always careful with new things because I don't want to break it. Let's see. Is it going through? Let's try this side first. Maybe this flower has a coating on it. Okay, that's not that flower is not gonna work. But Here's this one. So basically, this is the same flower as this, and this is just a pure felt flower. And so what I did was just, I only did the center, right? We're pretending that there's another flower right next to it that's felt, that doesn't have whatever, the, I think those other flowers, they, they must have some kind of coating because they're pretty stiff. Um, so then I butted up the other one right next to it, which was really nice because then it gave us that full, you know, flower look. I really like that. This was the same flower, but with one of those circles that I did in the center. And so I just thought that was a really, really, I really like this. I mean, I like this too, but I really like this because I like 3D. Ooh, and this 
just like we did the fish that's how I did the letters and I really just freehanded it but if you want to to draw it first you can do that um, and then I was able to and I know this doesn't look pretty you guys because it doesn't match but so you get the idea if you do have a ribbon that you want to add but you can't get it to attach because it doesn't have a flat ribbon what I did was is take strips of felt and just kind of ran it in between and so I think um, I'll be trying that some more too so if there is a, a ribbon that you want to use or something that has beads ooh, this also works um, let's see like these ribbons these satin ribbons these work too and I'll show you because I did I used it and then I pulled it up which is how I know because I put it on here and then I'm like well this really doesn't match but I was just trying different fabrics um, so I pulled it up because I'm like, oh, I cannot show them that because they're going to think I'm nuts. That doesn't even match. Um, but just, just because, you know, we were playing with it. But you can take this ribbon like this, right? So any type of satin ribbon and... You know, but just know that you're going to be punching holes into that. So I think, you know, I would like to use it on here, but I think what I would like to do is lay the felt on top of it, right? Like butt it up against there so you don't see that color because the color doesn't really, the color of the ribbon doesn't match my project. And so I think when I do, when I do the bigger one, that's what I'll do. I'll do it like this. And then it will look really cool because you'll just see these beads hanging down below. And I think it'll be just another pretty, pretty little accent. So I thought this was really cool. And look, I can just pull this up. I mean, it does mess it up a little bit. But still, I mean, if you make a big mistake, you can just pull it right up. But if you're going to use this, it's going to stay in place. And it, it looks really cool. You get nice vibrant colors and then if you are so inclined of course you can always add your girl underneath and give her um, give her a give her a top and a bottom that actually fit her top fits her bottoms just I made it just a little too wide, but I think I can still salvage it. I am going to, I don't know. I'm not sure. I think what I'll do is cut it out, put it on the right background that I want it, do all my seaweed and everything, and then go ahead and use the same tool, right, to punch it onto the new felt and not even mess with anything that's going on here. And that was the other thing, too, because I did it, and I was like, oh, I didn't measure that very well because her tail's kind of hanging off and that's not cool but that's what I have for you tonight I hope you guys um, like what what we did tonight I think this is gonna be really fun and I think I think if I can find some other colors you are going to see some um, really cool projects from me with this because I just thought it was just the neatest thing and I thought it was really fun because it's kind of like you know doing things that I wasn't able to do before you you can paint something and you can do but there is something about being able to feel something and having that beautiful texture and that gorgeous color that just really pops so um yeah I think somebody's getting some mermaid tails yay so I'm Rita Barricat this is mixed media Monday make sure to stop by the blog tomorrow RitaBarricat.com for our blog hop with Clover. Um, it's gonna be a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, make sure to watch next week, Mixed Media Monday, every Monday night at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. See you guys next time, bye.